YouTube channel for especially people who are new to Buddhism. Number 31, count to 10 when angry, or you may find yourself weeping alone. A zoo hippopotam hippopotamus became pregnant. Her keepers waited eagerly for the birth, but when the time came to their great disappointment, the baby hippo was still born. In searching for the reason, they found that when the mother was transferred to a different room during her pregnancy, she had for some reason gone berserk with anger, and this episode had resulted in the death of the fetus. I remember being shocked on reading this account of needless tragedy in the newspaper. Anger, it seems, releases toxins into the system, that can destroy physical health. The effects of anger on humans are just as disastrous. One often hears accounts of street quarrels that turn into fights in which someone collapses in rage before ever landing a blow. And there is a famous story of an eminent priest who spent 40 years reciting the Lotus Sutra only for all the merits so painstakingly acquired to be lost in a moment's angry outburst. When blood rushes to the head in a fit of anger, we may say and do things we would never dream of ordinarily, and as a result, find ourselves standing alone in a charred wasteland, weeping bitter tears. But if in the moment of anger, we take a second to think why we are outraged and what it is that so upsets us, our indignation often melts away. If you have been attacked even though you are in the right, there is no need to blame your attacker. Eventually, he is bound to come round and beg your forgiveness. No one is a match for the truth. If you discover that you are in error, then follow the proverb, it's never too late to mend. Take swift steps to correct the matter and improve yourself. To defend yourself furiously, even though you are wrong, is the height of folly. The aftermath of anger is dreary emptiness. So when you get angry, count to 10, and when someone else gets angry, steer clear of him or her. This is the wise counsel of ancients. Okay, very good. This is one of my favorite stories in the book also, because the teaching is very clear about how dreadful anger is and that our daily practice becomes to raise our awareness of it and take a deep breath, count to 10, to allow it to pass and not say or do things that later we want to take back. But as we all know, uh, we cannot undo what has been done. We cannot uh, remove those words that were already uh, presented. So yeah, it's very clear, mm -hmm. but as we always learn, like a snowman is made of snow, we humans are made of these blind passions like desire, anger, and foolishness. So actually it's very difficult to do so if we are not listening to Buddhism regularly and uh, have this clear purpose of why we listen, what is our purpose in life, it's difficult to tell ourselves, okay, not now, not now, I'm not gonna act upon my anger. Not now. So we just tell ourselves, there is another story somewhere that says, yeah, when anger arises, just tell yourself, this is the moment to practice. So it's a chance for me to observe my anger and kind of we develop intimacy with it to become aware of what's going on in our own mind, become our own best ally. 
And little by little, we can change such irritations to appreciation. Because as we don't react, there is a space in the heart that is created. And that space gets bigger and bigger. It's like your compassion gets um, greater and greater. And until it knows no bounds. That's what we want. We want to receive the mind of the Buddha and gain oneness with it. So we keep moving uh, towards the, such a great compassion. So good job, everyone, for being here, practicing together. We're going to have our newbies class in 30 minutes. And then we don't have classes except for this meditation class uh, for two weeks. So have a wonderful Sunday, everybody. Bye. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, everyone.